In this presentation, we're going to enter a transaction related to the purchasing of equipment with debt. In other words, we're purchasing long-term equipment, property plants and equipment, and depreciable assets type of equipment. We have done so in the past, but done so with cash. When we enter this information with debt, then we can't enter basically a cash transaction. So we have to typically use something other than uh, a normal type of form or document, such as a journal entry. Let's get started with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the Customer and Sales section. We're going to start off by opening up our reports. So let's go to the Reports drop down. We're going to go to the Financial Statements. So we're going to be opening up that favorite financial, that being the balance sheet. We're in February. That's what we want. So I'm going to be picking the month of February. Say OK. And then we're going to be purchasing property, plant, and equipment. So we're purchasing long-term depreciable assets, it can be called. That's going to be down here in the equipments section. We've already done this in the past. However, last time we paid cash for it. And you'll recall that property, plants, and equipment is one of those types of things that we don't purchase all the time. Therefore, there's no standard flow, flow process. There's no like form for it. So typically, when we think of the data input, we want to first think, is this a day-to-day -day type of transaction? If so, there's probably a form, an invoice or something else, a bill or something that we check, you know, that we can relate to it. If it's not something that happens every day, there's probably not a normal form that we have to enter. Then we're going to ask, well, is cash affected? If cash is affected, maybe we can write a check or we can uh, use some kind of like a deposit form or something like that. If cash is not affected, then we typically have to default to the journal entry. So this is an example where we typically would basically default to a journal entry entering this with the old debits and credits going back to the old debits and credits and that's how you, you typically want to think about your your transactions uh and, and again if you're from financial accounting you might want to do everything with journal entries that's not typically what you want to do because you want to set up the forms <laughs> so that the data input can be done easily by anybody and and for the day-to-day -day transactions and only use really the journal entries for those types of things that aren't part of the day-to-day -day type of processes purchasing equipment being one of them so then if we go to the tasks drop down we're just going to go to the tasks drop down and we're looking for the journal entry we want to enter journal entry so i'm going to say this journal entry is going to be as of the 28th that's fine i'm going to be debiting the general ledger account for the equipment so let's see if we can find that. There it is, the equipment GL. And then that's going to be debited for, we're going to say 50,000 of the equipment that we are purchasing. The other side then going to a, a loan. It's going to be a note payable. Now we already have a note payable set up, but, but if we're financing another piece of equipment or another loan out there, we may want a separate loan uh, for the separate piece of equipment. So I'm going to set up another loan which is going to be 2520. So I'm going to call it 2520 and current portion alone. I'll keep the same name. So I'm going to make another account. I'm going to make this large so we can, we can see it. This is going to be 2520. And it said current portion note payable. And then you might want like the last four digits of, 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 the, of the loan number or something like that, the last couple dis digits. And I'm going to take away the current portion. I'm just going to call it note payable so that I have enough room. And then you could put uh, like the last four digits of the loan number tracking each loan separately so that you can easily tie it out into the amortization table. I'm then going to say that this is going to be a current liability. So we're going to put it into the current section uh, and I'm going to say other current asset. Note that the loan should be other current liability, not an asset. Uh, I'm going to put it in there and keep it at other current assets. Then when we check the financial statements, it'll be wrong. And I'll go back into the general ledger and we'll make that adjustment. So you can either put other current assets, follow along with that process, or you can put other current liability at this point in time, other current liability being the correct option. Now I'm going to put all the notes into the other current assets in one account so that we can easily pay, make, make payments from the current asset account and then break out the long-term and short-term portion periodically at the end of the month. So remember, that's my recommendation for, for basically the loans. If you have multiple loans, I wouldn't group them in one account, but rather have multiple accounts so that you can tie out the loans. I wouldn't have a short-term and long-term portion all the time broken out, but have them in one account so that you can uh, then tie those loan payments into the amortization tables if you so choose breaking out short-term and long-term periodically at the end of month or year for financial reporting purposes. 
So that's uh, one, one way you could do it. Other ways you could do that. But we'll save this and say OK. So there it is. And then I need to pick up that loan amount. So we put that in the 2520. So that's the note payable. That's the one uh, you could put in the description. Uh, purchase of equipment uh, for, for loan or something like that. Purchase, and I misspelled purchase here. Purchase. And then we may want to copy that. So I could copy that and put that on both line items here. And then this is going to be a credit of the 50000 as well. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and save this then. Close this out. Then go to our financial statements. So we have once uh, the balance sheet open already. So I'm going to go back up to the balance sheet. And notice I put it in there as a, as a current assets type of account. Which is wrong. It should be a liability type of account. So let me go back back on over to our, to our uh, chart of accounts. So I'm going to go into our data. I'm going to go into, I believe it's in the banking sections. One way we can go there. Or I, I usually go to the lists. Lists. And then I want to go to the chart of accounts. And then I'm going to make this large. I'm going to look for that uh, uh, account that I put in the asset section. So it's here in the asset section. And I want to make it a liability account. So I'm going to uh, double click on this item. So it's in there as an other current asset instead of a liability. So I'm going to say that this needs to be an other current liability. So like so. And then let's save this. And let's close this. And let's close that. And then let's uh, go on back over to our balance sheet and refresh. It should disappear from this side. The equipment is going up. If I double click on the equipment... There we have uh, the equipment for the 50,000 purchase. If I double click on that, it takes us to our journal entry, closing this back out, closing this back out. And if we go down to our uh, note payable, then uh, double click on that and then go into the equipment account. Once again, it's going to take us back to that journal entry. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.